Welcome back, Shaloners, and welcome again, Believers. Today, we're going to keep on talking about Justin Bieber, but just a little itty bitty bit. Moreover, we're going to talk about us, because who matters in this world? Girls, not boys. We're sick of males, sick of white males. We're sick of them. But we're still going to talk a little bit about Justin, because he just posted that, like, long-winded diatribe on his Instagram about basically trying to explain his douchebag years, how he's a victim of the you know, the fame machine, blah, 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 and how he's changed, like, sort of, maybe not really. I did a video on it uh, yesterday, so go and check that out. But today, we're going to focus on what to do if we kind of understand where he's coming from, because maybe we have a shady past we would like to leave behind. Maybe we were a bit of a fuck girl, yeah, you know what I mean? Or just had some things happen in your past that you are ready to move on from. I will tell you how to do that step by step. But first, just want to remind you guys, that if you have a love question of your own and want to talk with me privately, find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat to get connected. Also, be sure to join me this Friday, September 6th at 6 p.m. for a live stream. It's a live stream for charity. Uh, if you go to the link that I'm posting right here and down in the description, you can for $15 to the donation to a GoFundMe that I set up to raise money for school children here in New York City who need some back to school supplies. They're kids that I know through the church that I go to, Gethsemane Garden Baptist Church. It's a black Baptist church. The kids are, oh, I could eat them up. They're so cute. But there's a lot of people there at the church who live below the poverty line who really need some help. So if you donate $15, you get a free question answered live in the live chat with me. So just go ahead and by the question, <laughs> sorry, make the donation, and then you can put your question right there in the donation box, like the comment box. Anyway, back to what we're talking about today. Moving on from a painful past, right? Okay. <clears throat> I think this is like one of the top questions I get from you guys, but it's like you don't even like necessarily know that that's really what you're asking. It seems like it's in a different form. It's like, I can't get over this guy. I can't get over being bullied in high school. I can't get over like the reputation that I used to have, what it actually is, is a lack of learning and a lack of accountability. Because that's what we talked about with Justin Bieber's whole thing. Like he talked a lot about what everyone else did to precipitate his douche years. He did not talk a lot about his personal role in it. Never did he say the words, but at the end of the day, I was my own person and I made the decisions that I made and no one else is at fault for that but me. He didn't say that. Maybe that was a subtext and maybe he felt like he didn't have to say it because that was so obvious. I don't know. But I think it's interesting that he chose to omit that because that told me that, you know what I always say, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And I didn't get the sense he was truly, really looking at his decision making in the face and being like, this was kind of all me. I mean, this, this was me. Because you know what, guys? It is all us. It really is, at the end of the day, all us. We can blame other people. We can blame our parents. We can blame the patriarch and blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, who exactly is forcing you to drunk text an ex? Who forced you to cheat on someone? Who forced you to sleep with two guys in a day? Maybe five. These are all our own decisions. So what do you do if you are like, I want to move on? Well, that's why I talk about accountability. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. And when you guys ask me questions about like, I can't get over this guy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's not the guy that you're fixated on. It's what you did wrong in this relationship that denied your own intuition and your better judgment. And probably the advice that literally every person in your life was giving you, that you were like, I choose not to hear that. You guys are all against us. On some level, you knew better. Not only did you know better in terms of the reality of the situation, you knew that you could do better. You know what I mean? And when we do things that are contrary to that, to our authenticity and our pure self-worth, we're going to get twisted up over it. And it's going to be really hard to leave that behind. So if you're looking back at your past, if you were a bit of a fuck girl, I know I was, what you do is an autopsy. Ugh. I don't like autopsies on humans and I don't like them on my own behavior, right? Sorry, I'm so thirsty. I don't want to watch an autopsy of a dead body. And I certainly don't want to do one of my own shitty relationships. But that's the first thing I tell you guys. If you're like, I can't get over, like, maybe this ex came back into my life and I shouldn't have given him another chance. And I did. And now I cannot move on. I'm like, it's because you are not acknowledging your role. And I know what you're going to say. Like, maybe the thing you're trying to get over 
was it your fault? That's probably true. I have a whole video on how to get over bullying and past trauma, so look that up. But what we're talking about today is histories that actually were in control, that we were in control of. And that is step number one, is acknowledging that. We really did choose to do this. And <clears throat> a lot of times, what we're afraid of is that legacy following us. Because legacies do follow you. We live the label. You know when you're bullied or someone calls you a slut or you get labeled a slut? You live the label. It's like, well, everyone thinks I'm a hoe anyway. So why, why shouldn't I like get a train run on me or something crazy, you know? Or just even that mantle that you carry in your mind and that's how you view yourself. But it doesn't have to be, right? So the first thing you need to do if you're ready to leave your past behind is you sit down and you write down on a piece of paper because studies show that we bond to a message more when we're physically writing it out. We have to be more intentional. It takes us more time. We can't do it while we're looking at something else. Connect to it. And write down all the things you did that you know you shouldn't have. And I'm not saying, you. this isn't like the list of punishment and shame. It's the opposite, right? It's the opposite. Because like I say, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. If you were trying to, to like revamp a house, right? You wouldn't just be like, um, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't want to think about it. You would go room by room and be like, this needs to be fixed. That needs to be fixed. That needs to be fixed. And you wouldn't have an emotional attachment to it, right? Because the house was an extension of you, but it is not you in general. That's the same with behavior. It's an extension of you, but it doesn't have to be who you are. So walk through the house of your history, right? And point out things and try to do it as neutrally as possible. And you know what helps sometimes? Pretend that it's someone else. Like literally put someone else's name like at the top of that list and go through and be like, this is, say it's me. You can say it's Shallon. Shallon did this. Shallon did that. Shallon did five shots every time she went out on a date before she got there, blah, blah, blah. And then, then switch the names and be like, okay, here's, Here's what I did. And then you go back through that list and you, you analyze why you were doing it. So much of the time, our bad history is us trying to distract ourselves from a trauma or a stagnancy in other parts of our life. Our life. <clears throat> so when I was at my fuck girl peak, you know, just like wiling out, there was a direct correlation with my career stagnating. Direct. It was when I met my hurt locker and I like fixate on him for literally five years. Ugh. Still miss him. And then when I met my second hurt locker, again, it correlated with a point of stagnancy in my life and my other relationships in my career because I was reaching out for something, reaching out for a drug, right? That's what drugs are. They're a distraction, they're anesthesia. That's what drugs are gambling, shopping, drinking, whatever it might be, and fuck girl behavior. And that manifests as, yeah, probably too much drinking bad toxic relationships, bad self-destructive friendships, dynamics with family that are unhealthy, constantly picking fights, victim narratives and mentality, right? So instead of just doing this autopsy inventory of your bad behavior, you're doing that not just to like self-flagellate and be like, look what an asshole I am. You're doing it to make connections, right? You want to look at this piece of paper and see these seemingly sporadic data points and you want to connect the dots. You're like, oh, and put dates next to them. Be like, okay, so 2016 was catastrophic. What was going on in my life then? Oh yeah, my parents were getting a divorce. That might be the thing that you didn't want to deal with, so it manifested as bad behavior, right? Because once you hone in on that, once you get to that psychological splinter, and you know how splinters are, if you don't pull them out right away, even though it's painful, they fester and they hurt and then they become a huge problem. Your psyche is like that too. She will be hurt and she can do it the easy way, right up front, or she can do it the hard way. She doesn't care. Her voice is gonna get louder and louder and throbbier and throbbier, just like that infected splinter, right? <clears throat> so get to the root of that and yank that shit out. Because then what happens when you yank a splinter out? You start to heal. It's a slower process than had you just pulled it out in the first place, but live and learn. So once you start to correlate all of these things, you know, and, and look at them, ask yourself if these issues are still at play right now. Have you gone on and dealt with your family's divorce? Say that that's the thing. If not, have maybe you just adapted your bad behavior to be more like sustainable? Like, no, you're not ripping five shots at happy hour every night. 
but you're coming home and drinking a whole bottle of wine in the privacy of your own house. That's not better. You know, that's just, that's adaptation. And what vices are, are viruses and viruses do adapt. People find a way to fit them into their life in an unhealthy way, but they, they make it sustainable because it seems easier than pulling out that splinter, right? So once you do this, once you have analyzed and you're like, okay, I have pulled out that splinter. I did deal with things, but I still feel that residual shame. I feel that shame. I want you to go back down that list. And if you wrote five shots before every date, I want you to write on the other side in a new column, what you do now before a date that's healthy. I watched the Kardashians so that I put on the appropriate amount of contour. That's healthier. It's not completely healthy, but it's what I do. So I'm going to say that it's healthier, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Dying. I've been flying all day yesterday. So I'm just like this dehydrated, like jerky person. So once you make that second, second column where you go through and you point out to yourself all the ways that you don't engage in this behavior anymore, you can sit and you know what you're looking at? Progress. And what is progress? Self-awareness. Progress is learning. And then you can sit and say, I'm never going to go back to 2016 me because I know why she was the way she was. And I know now why I'm not going to get like that again. And should another situation come up, like the one that precipitated 2016, now I have a plan. Now I have red flags that I can identify. So when I see myself, oh, did I take three shots before this date? Oh, we're back in bad girl territory. So now we're going to look on the other side of that column and you're going to have a plan for how to balance that out. The antidote to a virus, right? It's not that hard, but it takes the thing that none of us wants to do, which is looking at our own bad behavior. Can you guys hear these kids? I swear to fucking God. Like they're literally just standing out there screaming. They're just standing out there screaming. I need to move to like the country. Is there a country, like a country on planet earth that doesn't have children? Is it Greenland? That sounds fine. I bet it's Monaco. I bet there's like no kids in Monaco. And if they are, they're like kept in like very fancy cages, like away from their parents, like because their hands are sticky because the parents are like wearing furs and like, we're going to Polo, don't touch me, Caspian. You know, like that's like, that's the kind of mom I want to be. <clears throat> anyway, so you've done this. You've done the inventory. Now what you need to do is reframe all of this. I don't know if you guys listen to my podcast. You should. But recently I did one on origin stories and someone wrote in, it was actually a guy and it was really interesting to hear from like a guy, like for once, he sounds hot too. <laughs> and he's like, you know, I grew up basically poor and I have this like complex about it. And I'm like, you know what? I get it. I, I had a single mom and I, at some point had to reframe my origin story from being the thing that I like shrunk away from because I was like, kind of ashamed and you know, like I, I was not ashamed, but like bitter that I hadn't had the same opportunities that other people had had. But now I reframe that, that my origin story is my favorite story because my origin story made me the person that I am. Had I grown up with like a rich daddy who had handed me everything, you think I would have worked this hard in New York City? You think I would have hustled the way I did? Do you think I would have like pushed those boundaries to make connections and meet people and go to events by myself because I knew there was a business connection there that I needed to ascend to a higher plane because I needed to pay rent for a bigger apartment. No, I wouldn't have done any of those things. God bless the broken road. Everything that you think was a setback was a setup. That was a setup that launched you to where you are now, if you let it. And the way you let it is by looking at it right? You learn from something and then it becomes the setup. Because until you learn from something and look something in the face and take your personal responsibility, it just seems you just, you get caught in that loop of like, why, why, why? I'm sad about this. I feel guilty about this. I feel ashamed about this because there's no finish to that sentence. There's no learning opportunity. So of course you're going to get stuck in a loop. Of course you're going to get stuck in a bad place. Turning something into a learning opportunity is how we as humans process bad things. That is how we survive. That is our survival mechanism. If we don't learn from something, we sink. We literally give up. So it's painful and it's ugly, but the alternative is like infinitely worse. So now that you've done that hard work, you can look back at all the things you've been through and been like, 
that wasn't, 2016 wasn't catastrophic. It was the year I learned the most. It was the year I actually grew the most. And growth is painful. That's why they call them growing pains. I didn't know that I was growing at the time. Like just like when you're going through puberty and you're getting taller, it's like you might not feel taller, you know, but six months down the line, your mom measures you in the kitchen on the little thing. And you're like, oh my God, I grew two inches. That's why my body hurts so much. That's why my hips would wake me up in the middle of the night hurting. I was growing and I didn't know it. Same with the bad parts of our life. Same with the fuck girl past. Same with the things we're embarrassed about. Those were learning opportunities and you could acknowledge them as such when they happen. I mean, that's really the goal, right? That's, that's the peak of self-awareness is you can stop right when it happens. You're like, oh, I'm learning. Actually, the peak is learn before you have to go down these bad paths, right? You know, <clears throat> but the sooner the better. It's never too late to acknowledge a learning opportunity and to reframe it as exactly that because then you're going to go out into the world. Like I said, with my origin story, it's no longer something that I shy away from. I lead with that shit. I was like, look what I've accomplished. Look at the trajectory I've taken in my life. Oh, Allie from Long Island. Wow. Your dad paid for your apartment in New York saying you're a fashion buyer. Your story's stupid. It has no arc. Every, everybody knows that a good plot, the character has development and I got it, baby. And so do you. You just have to look at it. You have to be willing to face it and look it in the eye and see those learning opportunities where they are. And then you release its power. It goes from something bad to something very good. So when you speak about a bad past now, say you're on a date and you meet a guy and you've had a shady past, maybe you're an alcoholic, you come through this with confidence. Because when you speak about something from a place of like shame and apologetic, disgusted standpoint, you know what you are? Easy prey. A manipulative person sees that and they're like, <laughs> they know the button to push. They know what to do. They know that you have shame underneath there and shame makes people very malleable, very easy to manipulate. And we're too good for that. And it doesn't have to be like that because your past is your past is your past. You're not going to change it, right? So you can either reframe it and make it something that's going to work for you. That's set up or you could keep that splinter embedded and it's going to throb louder and louder and more painfully until you decide to pull it out. It's up to you. But like I said, if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, find me on the Instant Go app and be sure to follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO, where I let you guys vote on the next topic of the video, just like you did on this one. And listen to my new podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday. Yeah!